In this video, I'm going to walk you step by step through how to knit the rounds for this beautiful stitch pattern. This stitch pattern is used in two of my brand new patterns, the Gemma Knit Lace Cowl and the Mandy Knit Pullover. The Gemma Knit Lace Cowl is a beautiful cowl that is quick to work up for a last minute gift or a quick treat for yourself. It features one ball of Be So Bold yarn and it's a great way to practice the stitch pattern before trying the Mandy Knit Lace Pullover. This is a top-down pullover featuring Biso Sporty yarn that begins with a lace yoke and continues into simple stockinette stitch for the body. I've provided links in the video description for both patterns as well as both yarns. First, I wanna show you how to read the chart and then we will read the chart along as we knit each round of this pattern. Notice that all of the numbers are on the same side of the chart. That indicates that we are working in the round. So we'll be reading each round from right to left. You'll also want to refer to your key, just in case you're not familiar with some of the symbols. When a square is blank, it's a knit. The circle is a yarn over. The right leaning hat, uh, slash is knit two together. The left leaning is slip, slip, slip knit. And the upside, or the kind of M-shaped symbol is slip two, knit one, pass two slip stitches over. I'll show you how to do all of those stitches and you'll see that there are two setup rounds to begin with, which is a knit two together yarn over, worked all the way around, and then a plain knitting round. And then for most of our stitch pattern, we are actually going to do a patterning row on every round, or patterning stitches. We're not alternating rows of pattern with rows of plain knitting. So let's start with row three. That's where we're gonna start on our swatch and our sample. And it starts with a slip slip knit, knit three, knit two together, yarn over, knit one, yarn over. And we're going to repeat that eight stitch multiple all the way around. So let me show you how to do that with the yarn. I do recommend using a stitch marker. So you want to place a stitch marker on your needle to indicate the beginning and the end of the round. And we said the first stitch is a slip slip knit for round three. So we're going to slip both stitches purlwise to our right hand needle, insert our left hand needle into both stitches, yarn over your needle and pull through. That's a slip slip knit. Then knit three. Knit two together. Yarn over knit one and yarn over. Now that whole sequence is what we will what we will repeat all the way around. So I'll do it one more time. Slip slip knit. Knit three. Knit two together. Yarn over knit one, yarn over. You wanna repeat that all the way around. Okay, so we're ending round three with yarn over, knit one, and yarn over. Now I wanna come back and show you that on round four, we begin with a yarn over, then it is slip, slip, knit, knit one, knit two together, yarn over, and knit three. Now because we end the last repeat of round three with the yarn over and we begin round four, first repeat with the yarn over. Here's a tip that I want to show you. I find that you have two options to do this. You can end that round with a yarn over, slip your stitch marker, and add a second yarn over to begin that next round. Or you can just do the one yarn over and use it for both the last one and the first one, and then when we finish round four, we can work into both sides of that yarn over to work the knit stitch for the end of that round and the beginning of the next round. And what happens is that ends up giving you a smaller gap in that section. I did both ways. So let me set this down for a second. 
on my first repeat, I did the double yarn over like the pattern says, and it's a slightly bigger hole than when I did a single yarn over and used it twice. So the double yarn over is really easy to understand. So I'm gonna show you how you would do the single yarn over and use it for both stitches. So we'll do that yarn over, knit one yarn over for the uh, end of round three, and we're going to count it as the yarn over for the beginning of round four also and we'll just we're going to borrow it and use it in both so after that yarn over the next stitch is the slip slip knit then knit one knit two together yarn over knit three knit one knit two together, yarn over, knit three. Okay, then the rest of row, the rest of round four is going to be done exactly as written, yarn over, slip, slip, knit, knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit three. So we'll do that, yarn over, slip, slip, knit, knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit three. Now the other thing to keep in mind is that the more you understand the way your stitches look and the more you understand what stitch looks like what, the more likely you are to catch yourself from making mistakes when working in knit lace. So we're doing a yarn over, slip, slip, knit, knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit three. And we're doing it over a row well, let me show you for example. So we're doing over the three knit stitches between the slip slip knit and the yarn over. That's where we're doing the slip slip knit, knit one, knit two together on the next round. So you can see here's the slant from the slip slip knit on the previous round. And here are the knit three stitches and here's the knit two together on the previous round. So we're trying to line all five of those stitches up to do the slip slip knit knit one and knit two together. So if you're coming up to the next repeat of your work and you're like, oh geez, I'm not sure if I missed a stitch or not. If you pay attention to where recognizing those stitches, like here's the slip slip knit, here's the knit two together and there's the knit three. If you line yourself up, then you'll, go, oh yeah, that's where I need to place my stitches. And so then we'll do the, we'll start a repeat with yarn over, slip slip knit, knit one, and knit two together. And so what we're doing is bringing that right leaning decrease up as a longer diagonal and same with the left leaning decrease, bringing it up as more of a diagonal. Then yarn over and then notice that our next knit, knit three is worked over a yarn over, knit one, yarn over. So if you're unsure, if you're off by a stitch or two, you wanna make sure that when you're doing that knit three, that the first one is worked into a yarn over, the second one is worked into a knit stitch, and the third one is knit into a yarn over. And when you're paying attention to that as you're working, I find that that helps eliminate a lot of mistakes if you're paying attention to working in the appropriate stitch. So not only working on your stitch pattern, but making sure that you're working into the appropriate stitch from the row or round below is a great way to help keep yourself on track. So then it's yarn over, knit, two, three. Notice we did, worked into a yarn over and knit one in a yarn over. So we'll do the repeat one more time. Yarn over, slip, slip, knit, knit one, knit two together, then yarn over, knit two, three. And you wanna repeat this all the way around. Okay, we're on our last repeat now, so we're knitting into the last stitch, but now we were going to borrow that yarn over from the beginning of the round to use it um, at the end of the round as well. So we're knitting into that yarn over for the end of the round, then we will pass our slip stitch over and then pick that yarn over back up work into the back of it to begin the first knit stitch of round five that's worked into the yarn over from the round below 
So un unless you wanted to do that double yarn over to do both, you can borrow that yarn over and work it into both sides of your round, working the last knit stitch into the yarn over from the previous round of round four, and then borrowing that yarn over to work a knit one into the first yarn over from round four. So now round five is a knit one, yarn over, S2KP, yarn over, knit four. And we'll repeat this all the way around. So we started with the first knit one. We did that stitch already, yarn over, then it's S2KP, which means slip the first two stitches and we're gonna slip them knitwise. Knit the third stitch, pass those two slip stitches over the third stitch, yarn over, and knit four. Now I'm gonna show you some tricks on this round as well so that you can keep yourself lined up and recognize where you're working. Okay, so we start the round with a knit one and then yarn over, S2KP, yarn over. Now notice there's our slip slip knit from the round below, there's our knit one, and there's our knit two together from the round below. That's leaning left, this one's leaning right, and so we want to work that S2KP over those three stitches to bring those leaning sections to a point. So that, so if you're thinking that you might be off by your stitch or you need validation that you're on the right track, that's what you're looking for. You want to see a slip slip knit, knit one, knit two together underneath where you're going to do your S2KP. S2KP, yes, I said it right. Okay, so it's a yarn over, slip two knit wise, knit one, pass two slip stitches over, yarn over, and knit four. The other thing that you can look for on this round is that the first knit stitch at the beginning of round five is worked into a yarn over, then it's yarn over S2KP yarn over, then the next stitch is also worked over a yarn over. So we can look for that as well. So our first stitch at the beginning of the round is worked over a yarn over, yarn over, S2KP over those right and left leaning with one stitch in the middle. Yarn over, and then that next stitch is worked into a yarn over. And knowing these little things to recognize are really helpful for keeping you on track. And all it requires is to look and see what you're working into from the round below. So then round five, one more time, we'll do the repeat. Knit one, yarn over, S2KP, yarn over, knit four. And you wanna repeat that all the way around. Round six begins with knit two together, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, slip, slip, knit, knit two, three, and that's what we're going to repeat all the way around. Notice that where we do the yarn over, knit one, yarn over, it's going to be directly over the double decrease from the round below, and that's a really great way to make sure that you're on track, and I'll show you what that looks like. So we're gonna start with a knit two together. Round six starts with a knit two together, and it's with the first knit stitch and a yarn over. Knit two together yarn over, then knit one, and it you need to, uh, and if you're trying to line up to make sure you're on track, it's over the S2KP from the round below. So we'll knit one, yarn over, slip, slip, knit, and knit three. So I'll show you the repeat one more time. It's knit two together, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, slip, slip, knit, and knit three. And you're gonna repeat that all the way around for round six. 
Okay, we're ready to begin round seven, and round seven is a yarn over, knit three, yarn over, slip, slip, knit, knit one, knit two together. But notice there is a note at the beginning of round seven, and that is to slip the first stitch to the end of the round for the last knit two together. So let me show you how we do that. We are going to remove our stitch marker and simply shift the first stitch at the beginning of the round over to the end of the round and then place our stitch marker back on. And it's just a way to shift the stitches to accommodate for that last knit two together at the end of this round. So now we'll go back to the beginning of round seven after we do our little note. Then it's yarn over, knit three, yarn over, slip, slip, knit, knit one, knit two together. So we've slipped our stitch. Now it's yarn over, knit three, yarn over, slip, slip, knit, knit one, and knit two together. Do that one more time. Yarn over, knit three, yarn over, slip, slip, knit, knit one, and knit two together. And we'll repeat that all the way around. Round eight begins with knit five, then yarn over, S2KP, yarn over. And so the things that we're going to look for in round eight is our first of the five knit stitches is going to be over a yarn over, then the next three over three knit stitches, the fifth of the knit five is over a yarn over, then it's yarn over S2KP over that section like we did a few rounds below where we made sure that that S2KP was over a left leaning decrease, a knit one, and a right leaning decrease. And I'll show you what that looks like now with the yarn. So round eight is knit five, where we're working over a yarn over to start with. And this is just, I'm telling you this, so in, in case you need a guide, if you feel like you're getting lost in your round, it's so helpful that if you recognize your stitches, you can help, it helps you to keep on track. So that fifth stitch of the knit five is over a yarn over, so we're definitely on track here. Then we're doing a yarn over S2KP yarn over, over a left leaning decrease, knit one, and right leaning decrease from the row below. So you can see that that's left leaning, knit one, and right leaning. So we'll do that yarn over, slip two stitches knit wise, knit one, and pass the two slip stitches over, yarn over. So we'll do our repeat one more time. It's knit five, Yarn over, S2KP, yarn over. And you want to repeat that all the way around. For round nine, we're going to simply knit around. But what I want to show you first before we start that is that round eight ended with a yarn over. So I just wanted to show you how to carry that yarn over again, like we did in previous rounds. So we've got a yarn over then our stitch marker, and then we want to work the next stitch. What I try to do in a situation like this is try to manipulate my yarn so that that yarn over that's meant to be on the end of the round doesn't slip to this side of the stitch marker before I knit the next stitch. Now, if you're being really mindful and aware of your work, really doesn't matter, right? because you'll remember that it's supposed to be at the end of the work. But let's say you make a mistake and instead of keeping it to the right side of that stitch marker and knitting the next stitch, let's say that it gets to the left side and then you knit the next stitch. And let's say you don't notice it till you're a couple of stitches down the way. I wanna show you, you can still fix that. You can wiggle that stitch marker inside that yarn over and slide it over and then you've got your yarn over placed where it needs to be, which was at the end of round eight. And so now we're at the beginning of round nine and we're going to simply knit each stitch around. And what that means is we're knitting each stitch and yarn over. Yarn overs count the same as any of the decreases or regular knit stitches. We're going to knit every stitch around. 
Okay, we're ready to begin round 10. Round 10, we're going to knit two together, yarn over, and repeat that all the way around. So we slipped our stitch marker, knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, yarn over. We're going to knit two together and yarn over all the way around. Okay, and round 11, the final round of our stitch pattern. Notice how we have a bold red line around this section of the chart. That is because that's the repeat. So if you were continuing on, like for example, for the cowl, we repeated rounds three through 11 for the remainder of the cowl. Or if you're making the sweater, you're going to repeat rounds three to 11 for however many sections you're doing to make whatever size of the sweater. But the repeat for the stitch pattern to create this beautiful stitch pattern is to repeat rounds three through 11. So we're ready to do round 11 right now, which is the same as round nine. We are simply going to knit all the way around. So that means every stitch and every yarn over. Just simply knit each stitch around for round 11. You want to refer to the links in the video description to get either the pattern for making this beautiful lace cowl or for making the beautiful Mandy knit lace pullover. And there are also links in the video description for ordering each of the yarns that we used for these two projects. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all, please feel welcome to leave them for me in the comments. And if you check out the video description, I've provided links for everything we talked about in this video. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you in the next video.